Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and I'm bringing them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, starting with a great article by CMEC Maznavi, and it states, after a week of bullish news for Bitcoin, crypto investor sentiment index is at extreme greed. And these are the things we really need to watch out for, which is extreme greed, which can really lead us into some major pitfalls and how we need to actually avoid them also. Crypto newcomer soars 1,125% after receiving a big boost from Binance. And we had actually talked about this in Friday's video. And I have to be honest with you, I never would have covered this if it wasn't for Trade the Chain. We also have to take a look at my portfolio, how I've added to it, why I'm biased, and where I store all my cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And finally, we'll take a look at Q of the day. Where we're going to help a subscriber move their Uniswap over to Celsius. So we'll do all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is October 25th, it's about 2 p.m. Texas time. And uh, hey, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, it's been a great week. So Bitcoin is still holding strong on a Sunday, which is amazing. Bitcoin is at 13,042, uh, down a little bit, but over the seven day period, 15% can't beat that. I will take that W. Ethereum down a little bit, but still above 400. So it's still a great week. And it's almost 11% up for the seven day average. Tether's Tether, XRP holding strong at a quarter. Bitcoin cash down a little bit, uh, but again, 11% uh, up, which is of course not too surprising uh, considering that they are part of the uh, four horsemen, I like to call them, because they, it's going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Those are the four that's going to kick it all off for the PayPal integration. Chainlink down, uh, wow, 4%, that's obvious, that's a lot, but uh, still holding okay at 12.30, but it is up almost 16% for the week. Binance coin is down, sure, Polkadot, not too much, and really just a little bit of, uh, around the board, just a little bit down, a little bit up. Uh, Bitcoin SV, for some reason, up 5.3%, no idea why. There's been no news, no new partnerships, no nothing really going on that I know of. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comment section, I don't know why I would go up 5%, but hey, it is cryptocurrency digital asset market, so who knows. <laughs> And what else we got? Nothing really too big. Looks to be about the same thing. Whoa, except for Filecoin, 32%, uh, back to $34, so not too bad. So if you bought Filecoin when it really dipped down pretty low, then congratulations, this is a pretty good day. Uh, maybe uh, the miners and developers came to an agreement and there was some kind of problem or issue going on between the both of them. So uh, hopefully that resolves. Filecoin is actually, it looks like a pretty good project. It's kind of like Theta where it uses unused resources to fuel the network. Theta is all about uh, the streaming or data for, for video to give HD or 4K. And Filecoin is all about uh, using uh, unused resources for cloud storage. So I really need to do a, a bigger deep dive because I took a look at their website. It looked pretty good uh, as far as like the concept, but I know everybody says once it's new, of course it's a scam, but uh, you know, hey, not all, not everything's a scam. That's all I'll say. Theta Network uh, down a little bit, which is good for me. I'm trying to uh, build up my Theta uh, depository of tokens. So hopefully it falls some more. <laughs> <laughs> that's really it and what else we got uh, not too much looks to be about the same all the way down here so let's just jump into today's top story so this is a uh, fantastic article written by uh, Siamak Maznavi hope I said his name right I've actually went and followed him on Twitter he I've covered a lot of his stories I don't give him near enough credit so uh, Siamak if you're listening uh, fantastic hopefully uh, <laughs> I didn't put your name too much Hopefully I didn't butcher your name too much. So this is all going to go over just a recap of everything that's been happening in the last week. And also it's going to talk about extreme greed. And I will just preface it with this. This is some of the most dangerous times of pitfalls that you can come into. This is kind of like 2016 when we know where this market is going. I mean, we all know it. Let's just be honest. Let's call a spade a spade. Uh, it's going to go up. It's going to rock it up. When? I have no idea. I mean, it could be in three months, it could be in a year and a half. I'm not for sure, but this is the time to accumulate. And the real question is, you know, how greedy are you going to be? I mean, how much are you going to put into it? And I see pitfalls such as people just going, you know what? I got a lot of money. I'm just going to put it all into X coin or whatever it is. And I think that's a mistake because you have to understand, we're still going to see turbulence. There's still going to be major dips and there's going to be major, uh, you know, peaks. So you have to really pace yourself for the long haul. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. So if you're out there going, well, you know, Bitcoin's going to go to, you know, 250,000. Okay. I mean, maybe. Okay. I'm going to sell my house 
and I'm going to put everything into Bitcoin. I mean, that's a pretty extreme case. Or I have 14,000 just laying around or 13,000. I'm going to put it all into Bitcoin. You could do that. But remember, I mean, something major could happen. Who would have ever expected COVID-19, the coronavirus to come in, hit global everything and Bitcoin to go down to, you know, below $4,000? I mean, something else could happen again, truly altering. I don't know what it is, uh, but Bitcoin could go down again. Now we know it's going to go back up. So if you put all your money in right now and you lose 50% because you're like, oh, shoot, something happened. Then, you know, Bitcoin went from 13 to five. Uh, that's a bad play because if you just would have dollar cost average in, just put in, you know, 100, 500, 1,000 or whatever it is, and then just done it slowly and slowly and slowly. When it does go down to 5,000 or 6,000, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying when it does take those dips, First of all, you don't have that tightness in your chest. Second of all, you, is you have money to buy those dips. So I know it seems like you should be dumping a ton of money into it. I'm just telling you right now, don't do it. Don't get too greedy. Pace yourself. This is a marathon. All right, let's talk about what's going on as far as this last week. So let's call it. Uh, this has been a fantastic week for Bitcoin and to a lesser extent, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, obviously because of the PayPal announcement, which was just really fantastic. So first on Wednesday, I did, I did not cover the story because I didn't even know about it. FinTech startup Mode Global Holdings PLC announced it had become the first publicly listed company in the UK to adopt Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. According to the press release, it's allocated up to 10% of its cash reserves to purchase Bitcoin and adopt it as a treasury reserve asset. And that is on top of all the other big company names that have actually gotten into Bitcoin uh, and have taken the fiat from the treasury into Bitcoin, which are people like MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, the CEO, uh, they bought in at 425 million. Now they're almost at 500 million. So this is like maybe three weeks, four weeks ago. So that guy looks like a genius right now, right? Galaxy Digital has been there for quite some time. Mike Novogratz, they bought in at 134. Now they're at 216. Square, they bought in at 50. Now they're at 61. And this is just like two or three weeks. Imagine making $11 million in a couple of weeks. Uh, try doing that anywhere else. Then we got other places like, oh, look at that, Voyager Digital. Uh, they put in almost 8 million. They doubled that in a very short amount of time. Actually, everybody's up. Every, let's just be honest. Everybody's up. Uh, the new one, Stone Ridge, Stone Ridge Holdings. They put in 115th. Jeez, they're at 141. 141 million already. Amazing. So this is all good news for the crypto market in general. I think it's just fantastic. On top of this new one, which is Mode Global Holdings. So uh, looking pretty good as far as corporations. And like I've said before, uh, if you're an entity, a corporation, a conglomerate, and you're looking from the outside in, you're like, hey, we need to get on this, guys, because uh, the bus is about to leave the station. We need to get on this. So that's the first thing. Second, which we've covered on this uh, channel ad nauseum, is that PayPal is going to be integrating with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Uh, I don't want to really be a dead horse, but that's kind of big. And this, But this part was a little, little nuance, and this was Dan Schulman, President and CEO of PayPal, and he said this, the shift to digital forms of currencies is inevitable. Right there, what he is saying, it's not for or so much for investors, the people that are already in there. We already know this. He's saying these things. It's like a shot across the bow for all the banks or the financial institutions to say, wake up. You're missing the boat. Things are going to pass you by. You're about to get blockbustered. So hopefully they all listen. And if they don't, I think they're all going to fall the wayside. Anyhow, digital currencies bring with it clear advantages in terms of financial inclusion and access, efficiency, speed, and resilience of the payment system, and the ability for governments to disperse funds to citizens quickly. So a couple of things to unpack there. First of all, really, what again, what he's saying is like, look, banks have not updated their software since the 1970s. You guys keep still using Swift. Consumers don't will not accept that. You need to upgrade. Second, he's saying, look, all the stimulus checks that you guys put out was a nightmare. It was a hard uh, proposition to actually get them into the hands of people who needed the most. And you had a lot of problems along the way. So why don't you make it easier on yourselves and just go digital like every other industries? You got to talk to them like they're five because they can't get it through their thick heads, I guess. So that's good news. And then the last piece, uh, PayPal is planning to expand the features to Venmo and select international markets in the first half of 2021. So when PayPal opens this up, it just will be for the United States first. But then in 2021, I mean, look, sky's the limit. So again, this is big news. Uh, 
I don't know how else to say it. Uh, it's just going to be enormous moving forward. And this was interesting. Third on Friday, 2023rd, Nicholas Penegroudsklo. I'm sure I nailed it. A managing director at JP Morgan who works on global market strategy, published a report that talked about the long-term potential of Bitcoin. And not that that was interesting enough that he just published it, but it was who it went out to and how big of a newsletter it is. So Dr. P, as I'll call him now, he does the publication Flows and Liquidity, which is one of JP Morgan's flagship publications. The latest edition of Flows and Liquidity was sent out to the bank's clients yesterday and was titled Bitcoin's Competition with Gold. And it pretty much just lays it out and said, look, because of the fierce competition with gold and the millennials' decision to really look into digital assets and cryptocurrencies, they will adopt this faster as well as younger generations. So this is a fantastic opportunity as an investment vehicle. And that is JP Morgan. Remember that the CEO of JP Morgan said he would fire any trader in a second for trading Bitcoin. This is on September 12th, 2017. My, how things have changed in just a couple of short years. But look, I'm not here to hate on anybody. I'm glad that Jamie realizes his mistake, and I'm hoping that he'll uh, join all of us into this natural inclusion, into the next evolution of financial resurgence. However, he is a banker, so I'm not going to hold my breath. Anyhow, moving on to our last piece, which is kind of a bummer. And that was the uh, almighty hope that there was going to be a physical stimulus package uh, between the Democrats and the Republicans uh, in Washington. And there was supposed to be some kind of deal for a COVID-19 relief package. But here's the thing. Uh, it's never going to happen. Uh, not before the election. I will just say that because this is all political posturing and uh, the Democrats are going to kick the football down the road or the can down the road. They're going to punt the football, I should have said. And uh, nothing's going to get done. And not only will it not get done, it won't get done uh, for quite some time, actually, because the Republican-controlled Senate is set to leave town on Monday after voting on confirmation of Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Amy Connie Barrett. So if this doesn't happen by Monday, newsflash, it won't. It's not going to happen for quite some time, at least until after the uh, election, which is in uh, less than two weeks, as a matter of fact. So you have to remember that this is government, and government doesn't work for the people. The government works for special interests and banks and corporations. They don't work for people. They haven't for quite some time. So if it happens to align with the best interests of the people that these corporations want, then sure, they'll play that off. But I, uh, I have no faith in the government whatsoever. I think they are inept. I think they have lost touch with, with reality and what the real people are actually going through. And um, I cannot believe that we have these laggards that are in Congress. Just my personal opinion, but you have to remember something, that with all these pitfalls and all these problems that are going on, this is actually good for our, our space because with the uh, inability for the powers that be to actually act and do anything that actually uh, results in some kind of positive change, uh, this is good for Bitcoin. This is good for cryptocurrency. It's good for digital assets. I, for one, see this as a very bright future for everybody in this space. Now, remember, uh, talking about greed, this is the problem. Right now, there's a thing called the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which is based on the analysis of emotions and sentiments from different uh, varying sources. And they just take a look at a big aggregate of different factors. And right now, they can say that it's extreme greed because everything, there is so much good news in the space. I mean, everything we just talked about. Uh, plus, we can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. So you have to be careful right now because I know you want to dump <laughs> a ton of money into the space. But I'm just telling you right now, it's a good space to be in. Just don't dump all your money. My personal opinion, not financial advice, this is what I'm going to do. Dollar cost average, be a little bit reserved, be measured, and prepare for dips when they happen. Look, you can trade and that's fine. I mean, I have nothing against traders. Uh, that's great stuff. But try to just sit back and just be an investor uh, just for a little bit if, if you're not already. It worked pretty well for Warren Buffett. I think it'll work pretty well for a lot of people. So that's all I have in this one. Let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, let's move on to our next story.